Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and in this lecture, we are going to be talking about polynomial long division. And we're going to start with a flashback from third grade, or whatever grade it is that you do long division in. And let's look at a problem like 1045 divided by 7. So I've gone ahead and set up our long division here, and I need to figure out how many times does 7 go into 1? And we know 7 does not go into 1, so then I need to expand it a little bit further and think how many times does 7 go into 10? And we know 7 goes into 10 one time, so I'm going to write 1 up top. Now I'm going to do 1 times 7, and we get 7. And now we subtract, so I get 3 and bring down our next number. Next, I need to think how many times does 7 go into 34? And I know that 7 goes into 34 four times. 4 times 7 is 28. When I subtract, I get 6. And now I'm going to bring down our 5. How many times does 7 go into 65? And 7 goes into 65 nine times. 9 times 7 is 63. And we are left with 2. You guys may have at this point started putting a decimal point and zeros here, but we're going to leave it like this. And there's really two ways that we could write our answer. We could say our answer is 149 and our remainder is 2. I'm going to put an equal sign there. Or we could also say that this is equal to 149 and 2 sevenths. And 2 is from my remainder. 7 is from what we were dividing by. So I would accept either of these two answers as your final answer. Now, of course, none of your homework's actually going to look like that. That would be way too easy. Um, so what we're going to be dealing with is actually using the same method, but with polynomials. So when I go ahead and set up our division problem here, there are two things that I really want to look for. I want to make sure that our polynomials are in descending order and that we fill in any missing terms with the zero, which we have done here. Here we didn't have any missing terms, so we were good to go. So when I'm working with this polynomial, when I'm trying to figure out how many times it goes into something, I'm really only going to focus on our leading term. And in fact, what I'm going to think of here is what times x makes x cubed. Okay, so what times x makes x cubed? And the answer there would be x squared. And notice that I wrote it in this column, and this is going to be like our x squared column. So now I'm going to think x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. Okay, so once again, kind of the thoughts that I had in my mind here was what times x is x cubed, and I figured out that was x squared, and I wrote that in the x squared column, then I distributed, and if you look at that previous problem, this is ex exactly what we did. We put our number up top, we multiplied, we wrote it down here, and the next thing we did is subtract, and the key thing here is that when I subtract, I need to change all my signs, okay, because we've learned subtracting just means I am adding the opposite. So in this case, these terms cancel out. Negative 5x squared plus 2x squared is going to be negative 3x squared. And then I'm bringing down my plus 7x. So now I'm thinking, what times x is negative 3x squared? Okay, so I think x times negative 3x would make negative 3x squared. And now I'm going to distribute. And when I distribute, I get negative 3x squared plus 6x. Now, since we are subtracting, I'm going to change all of our signs. So my x squareds cancel out. 7x minus 6x is just going to be x. And now I'm bringing down my negative 2. What times x is x? And the answer there would be 1. 
So I'm going to write plus 1. And when I distribute, I get x minus 2. When I subtract, I change both of my signs, so minus and plus, and I end up getting 0. So my answer here is x squared minus 3x plus 1. Our remainder is 0, so I don't need to write that anywhere. Okay, so just kind of to recap the process here. I'm, I set up my problem. I make sure our both of our polynomials are in descending order, and they're not missing any terms. I'm thinking, what times x is x cubed? Once I figure that out, I'm distributing, then subtracting, so I'm changing our signs, and combining our like terms, bringing down our next term. What times x is negative 3x squared? Distribute, go ahead and subtract, so I change my signs, combine our like terms, bring down our next term, and so forth. Okay, so our answer here, x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay, number two, moving on here. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And before I do that, I notice that I am missing an x squared, so I need to fill in a 0x squared. And you guys may be wondering why we do that. And it's kind of like when I write a number, like 901, okay, what this 0 here is telling me is that I have no 10s, but it's a placeholder. Okay, so same idea here. This is a placeholder, and I need that in order to separate my x cubed and my x. So now I'm thinking, what times 2x is 4x cubed? And I know that 2x squared times 2x is 4x cubed. When I distribute, I get 4x cubed plus 2x squared. When I subtract, I need to change both of our signs. And when I combine terms, I get negative 2x squared, and I'm bringing down my 5x. Now I'm moving on and thinking what times 2x is negative 2x squared. And that answer would be negative x. When I distribute, I get negative 2x squared minus x. When I subtract, I change my signs, and I end up getting... 6x, and I'm bringing down my 1. Lastly, what times 2x is 6x, and I know that that would be 3. 3 times 2x plus 1 would become 6x plus 3. I know I'm subtracting, so I need to change my signs, and I end up getting negative 2. So my answer here is 2x squared minus x plus 3, mm -hmm. remainder negative 2, the other one that I would accept is 2x squared minus x plus 3 minus 2 over 2x plus 1. Okay, and, and what we just did there is I took my remainder, the negative 2, and put it over whatever we were dividing by. We're just going to go through one more problem because we're really doing the same thing every single time. And so this time it just looks a little bit different, and we're dividing by a trinomial, but that really shouldn't change anything. The first thing I notice about this problem is that we are missing a value. We are missing a 0x squared, so we are going to have to add that in when we set up our problem. So let's get started. I'm treating this exactly the same way. So what times x squared is 2x to the fourth? Well, that would be 2x squared, and notice I'm writing it all the way over here in my x squared column. When I distribute, I get 2x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 4x squared. We know that when we subtract, I have to change all my signs, so I end up getting 7x cubed minus 4x squared and I'm bringing down my plus 5x. Now I need to think what times x squared is 7x cubed, and that would end up being 7x. So I would get 7x cubed minus 14x squared plus 14x, and we're subtracting, so I'm going to change all of the signs, and I get 10x squared 
minus 9x, and I need to bring down my minus 1. Lastly, I need to think what times x squared is 10x squared, and that answer would be 10. When I distribute, I get 10x squared minus 20x plus 20. When I subtract, I need to change all my signs, and I end up getting 11x minus 21. So our answer here is going to be 2x squared plus 7x plus 10, remainder 11x minus 21. Or we could also write it as 2x squared plus 7x plus 10 plus 11x minus 21 over x squared minus 2x plus 2. And once again, we could write it either of these two ways, okay? I would accept either one for full credit. It's just important in case we saw something in a multiple choice fashion, like on our final exam, that we realize that both of these are accurate answers. Okay, so this is how we use polynomial long division. Quite honestly, it does not get any more difficult than what we just went through.